Magenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. Real Agriculture comes to you today from Ridgetown College. We're joined by Dr. David Hooker. Thanks for having us, Dave. Uh, thanks for being here. Hey, you've been doing a lot of work on long-term crop rotations here at, at Ridgetown and Alora. Let's talk about um, the objectives for your program. Yes, well, these long-term experiments, they were, one was set up in uh, 1980, the one in Delora was set up in 1980, and the one at Ridgetown, 1995. And the main objectives of these, this research was to answer the long-term type of questions. Like, we have lots of projects that would answer short-term type questions, like, for example, fungicide responses, corn hybrid responses, comparisons. But the long-term questions, they need to be answered with long-term experiments. Experiments have been set up for a long time. Now, the first thing we talked about was, I guess, maybe the, the, the leading emerging story here is the impact of rotations and wheat in that rotation. You want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so the Ridgetown experiment, it was set up with five rotations, and Alora was set up with... Uh, a uh, number of rotations as well, and each one of these sites are a little bit different. So at Ridgetown we have a continuous corn, we have continuous soybean, a corn soybean rotation, and a corn soybean uh, wheat rotation, and a soybean wheat rotation. And within the corn soybean wheat rotation we, all, we have those split, split up between uh, red clover underseeded and no red clover underseeded as well. So, and then each one of those rotations is split up between conventional and no tillage. So this has been going on for, for a, a number of years now. And um, just recently, in the past uh, five to ten years or so, we've begun to see, uh, see trends in the data. And it's, they tend to be tied directly to changes in the soil quality. And they, that in turn affects, uh, affects the crop responses. So we've seen tremendous value, especially of wheat in the rotation. Um, when wheat is added, for example, to a corn soybean rotation, wheat certainly adds value to both corn and soybean yields in the rotation. So um, first of all, I'd just love to show you some data. In the past five years, we have some good solid data on how wheat in the rotation, how it improves both corn and soybean yields. So let's take a look at some of the data. Okay, so here we have four years, uh, the past four years at Ridgetown, and this, let's just focus on 2009, this is the continuous corn, uh, these are the continuous corn yields, 133 bushel to the acre, and then in the co continuous corn, co corn soybean rotation, we have 150 bushel to the acre, and then when we include wheat in that corn soybean rotation, our yields go all the way up to 178 bushel to the acre. So the story in 2009 was including wheat in a corn soybean rotation, we increase our corn yields by 28 bushel to the acre. Okay, and so now 2010, we look at the same situation, we include wheat in the corn soybean rotation, our yields jump from 156 to 186 bushel to the acre, so 30 bushel increase due to wheat in the rotation. 2011, 2011 was a very late year for us at Ridgetown. We didn't get our corn planted until June because of wet conditions, and it just seemed to nullify any uh, rotation or tillage effect. But in 2012, we have another very consistent, again, about 19 bushel to the acre increase uh, when we include wheat in the corn soybean uh, rotation. So the corn soybean uh, rotation does offer some yield increase, um, 5 to 10 bushel to the acre over the continuous corn uh, situation, but when we include wheat in the corn soybean rotation, our corn yields seem to be quite consistently increased by about 20 to 25 bushels to the acre. Okay, so that is corn. And now when we look at soybeans, and again in 2009 this is continuous soybeans, and then a corn soybean rotation, and then a corn soybean wheat rotation, and you can see when we include wheat in the rotation, um, in a corn soybean rotation, our yields increase by 5 bushel to the acre. So 5 bushel to the acre increase in a corn soybean wheat rotation versus a corn soybean rotation. 
2010, yields are a little bit different, but when you include wheat in the rotation, four bushel increase there. 2011, we had seven bushel increase in our soybean yields when we have wheat in the rotation. And in 2012, we have an eight bushel increase um, in our soybean yields when wheat is uh, included in the rotation. Okay, so just excellent data that we've seen so far from both Ridgetown and Laura sites. So, so the number one thing here that we've that we've uh, that we've seen is that including wheat in the rotation, we improve our corn and soybean yields, and it's very consistent across years and between two environments at Alora and Ridgetown. And also, I should mention that um, as rotations get more complex, the effect of tillage um, decreases as well. So by far, the biggest effect in a rotation uh, tillage system is the rotation effect. That is by far the biggest crop response is in the rotation effect rather than the tillage effect. And the more complex the rotations are, the less tillage that we need to gener generate those high yields. Mm -hmm.